Hello and welcome to the Skycast, this Fantasy Football Scouts Sky, a fantasy football version of the regular Scoutcast. Um, it's finally arrived, the final game week of the season. My name is Joe and today I'm joined by Luke to look at our transfers, if we've got any left, and captaincy plans for game week 51, as well as any lessons we may have learned during this very tricky season. Welcome Luke, how are you? All right, I'm all right. I'm a little bit late, uh, a little bit tired. Stayed up very, very late for work last night, but um, my head's in the game. Just got out, got the coffee, ready to go, yep. and uh, try and attack the game week. <laughs> okay, we right, yeah, we'll see. Hopefully, we can give uh, everyone uh, a bit of a helping hand as the sky season finishes. Um, so, what we do is, as usual, we'll put our uh, team pictures up. So we've got a sort of a main team and a sort of a B team, and we'll see how they're going. So I'll put Luke's up first. Um, so for the benefit of the uh, podcast uh, listeners, uh, you've got uh, Edison, Van Dijk and Alexander-Arnold and Aurier, who Aurier keep, uh, amazingly keeps playing um, and, and got a clean sheet in the last match, um, considering, mm. considering the personal issues he's going through. Um, in this 3-4-3, you've got De Bruyne, Foden as a great back up there, Saar, Fernandez, Ings, Martial and Calvert-Lewin. And in your your sort of second team, uh, Sionju is still there um, with his red flag, Edison, Van Dijk, Gomez. And this is a 3-5-2. And you've got De Bruyne, some Maximum, Saar, Lucello, uh, Lucello rather, who's doing ever so well and actually playing and still looking like a really great asset. Uh, Fernandez, Ings and Jimenez. So... Um, What's the transfer situation like in either of these teams, and any any plans really for for transfers if you have any left? Uh, yeah, the transfer situation is dire. There is now zero in both teams. Oh, there we go. Um, despite me really wanting to save it for the last day, I basically didn't have uh, Danny Ings, mm. who is now in both the teams, as you can see, yeah. uh, for yesterday, and I just decided that covering that game rather than going with the Aurea or the Lacelso, mm. which to be fair, in what in the Aurea team obviously wouldn't have worked out too bad in the end. Mm. Um, that would have been okay. Um, but the other team, so and she got injured, so I didn't even really have a cap. I mean, I had Lacelso, but I, yeah, mm. not a particularly great captain. And I just decided that Danny Ings was was going to be so heavily owned. It's such a great game for him. Obviously, chasing the golden boot, we've discussed it quite a bit on the pod, haven't we? So I thought I'm going to have to to get him as my final move because not only has he got that game, then on the final day he's got another. You know, potentially very good game. Mm. He's at home at least, yeah. um, and still going for that golden boot. So I felt like that was a good use of it. It gives me the captain. It, it increases my captain on that day by a, you know, much mm -hmm. better captain on that day. And yeah, it, it kind of worked, didn't it? You got a goal and then yeah. you missed the penalty. So it wasn't it wasn't what I hoped for, but at the same time, it kept me um, level pegging. Yeah. So I'm out of transfers now, unfortunately. Yeah. And believe me, if I could, I would change probably about seven or eight players from mm -hmm. uh, from my teams. But this is this is part of the lessons learned that we'll get to at the end. That, yeah. um, I mean, when well, mixed with the, the pandemic, obviously hasn't helped with the individual no. days. I've just thrown a much greater d uh, need for transfers uh, than we usually would have had. But yeah, so I'm I'm kind of that's where I'm at now. I don't really have any options. Just gonna just gonna see what goes on. I th I hope most of my players will play on the final day, but. Um, I guess we're gonna have to wait for press conferences and stuff. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so I don't really have any plans. Sorry, Joe. We'll no, to, no, we'll that's fine. See if you've got any. But in terms of um, captaincy as well, so we've got a few matches left. So this is being recorded on the Monday. Um, so game week fifty is still going on, and so obviously game week fifty one is the focus here. But uh, obviously you've got some, you know, some quite good captaincy options here. You spoke about. Um, uh, you spoke about. Um, the, the Monday, which is tonight, um, that this is quite a good time for a differential captain. So Everton against Sheffield United could be. Uh, Brighton against Newcastle, um, some, some maximum could be if he was um, fit and ready to go. Um, mm. Trossard was another that's been mentioned for Brighton. Could be an interesting differential uh, for today. But obviously a lot of people will be going for Jimenez um, and mm. a Sheffield United um, defender. But there could be some traction there in your Calvert-Lewin. I think, um, and those that have Richarlison as well, I think there could be some 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 gains to be made there. And of course, Tuesday we got City against Watford, Villa against Arsenal. Um, I think that could be. I mean, obviously City are the, the key ones there. But but if anyone's chasing and they want to get a, a Bamiyang in, who we'll speak about a bit later, 
Um, this could be a good time to bring a Bamiang in. If you think that it's going to be hard to predict who in the city ranks is going to score the points, um, if you see, um, if you think a Bamiang is going to play, and he's against Villa, and he's just scored two goals against arguably the second best team in the country, City, um, then it could be could be a move there if you've got any uh, transfers left and you've got the money to do so. And then on the Wednesday, you've got Manchester United against West Ham, Liverpool against Chelsea. We've got and um, it's looking really good for your teams, in fact, because you've got Martial there. Um, and then so um, I think if you've got Fernandes in one team, but in the other team with Martial there, that gives a nice, nice um, alternative captain. And Fernandes is looking a bit tired. I mean, he still manages to get the points. Though, he's still he, got. If the FA Cup game was in the sky in the fan, in our fantasy game, then yeah, he scored a penalty, so he would have scored a goal, would have got good points on the board. But nevertheless, in open play, I think Martial, since he was rested in the FA Cup, I think he's a really good bet and one I would be considering bringing in in the in the team where I do have a transfer or two left. Um, but um, but yeah, so we'll come to captains for game week fifty one. But I'll just quickly put my team up because they're a bit a bit different. Now I've got my team one is is trucking along as it has been. It's uh, in the top four hundred now, um, so it's it's sort of going up in dozens or hundreds. It's not going up <laughs> to the first or it's not in the top ten <laughs> or anything. So it's just not really moving. And this is the one where I have no transfers left. So this one has Henderson, Van Dijk, Alexander-Arnold, Tarkowski, who rather boringly was my last ever transfer for this season in this team. Um, De Bruyne, Foden, Pulisic, Saar, Fernandes, Ings and Jimenez. So my captains there have been... I'm quite pleased I've got Tarkowski and at least I've got uh, 14 points from him. Um, Saar obviously is a rubbish captain <laughs> got, got me got me the blank and Ings yeah I captained as well um, but I'm quite happy with that that team I would like it to be better <laughs> I would love to have one or two transfers left with this to freshen it up a bit um, Saar is just a bit of it's not really happening <laughs> for this team you know most you can get is an assist um, but it's my it's my B team that I'm more excited about really because this is the one where i've had a few transfers fun yeah i can have some fun with this one i can have some trans i had i've had you know during the lockdown i've had you know a a bit less than 10 transfers left and i've been using them and this is something we'll discuss a bit later about to get high impact players in high impact captains in so you can see this one has pope van dyke alexander arnold and bulldog that's the boring bit and then you've got de bruyne Foden, Antonio, Fernandez, Giroud, Kane, and Ings. As you can see what I've been doing there the last few weeks. So I've got Antonio in, and he keeps he keeps being a great captain option. I've got Giroud in for his captaincy uh, day uh, a little while ago, and that worked out. I've got Kane, who's got me 34 points so far. Ings is still there, and I've got Foden as a backup to Kevin De Bruyne. But this one, I've got I've got two transfers left. So I've gone from about 4 or 5k into the top 1k, finally, for this one. And that was my aim for this. And I didn't think I would achieve it. So my aim for this is just to stay in the top 1k. Because for me, that's like a personal achievement. It won't mean anything to anyone else. <laughs> but for me, to get this team from nowhere to, to respectability was the sort of aim. And um, so I've got two transfers left. And... I actually was meant to do a transfer last week, but forgot because I was recording the scout what? cast. Um, I was going to do Giroud after he played to Martial and captain him. And uh, I didn't. And so Rookie stuff, Joe. Rookie stuff. I uh, know. Uh, but I was recording the scout cast at the time. and we no were, excuse. No and I was excuse. thinking, oh no, I can't. There's too many buttons <laughs> to press. <laughs> um, so I thought, oh, I'll leave it. <laughs> so I could still do Giroud to Martial move. I've got two transfers left. Giroud to Martial and captain him. I think that's a nice little alternative captain there to Fernandez. Um, but I kind of like going into the final day with two transfers because I can do it what I want then. And that means somewhere, if some people aren't playing or want to just really go for it, I could get a Bamiang in as well as Kane somehow <laughs> and all these things are possible with two transfers so I kind of like the flexibility of that and I think mm. I might leave it and to be honest Fernandez is not a bad captain is he for Manchester United no. 
So, and he's done really well with the Kane one, to be fair. Because yeah. the period since the restart, it's not looked like he's been... No. Well, he's looked like he's his previous self for like the last sort of two no. years where he hasn't been quite up to the speed. But I didn't see the game the other day, but apparently he looked very, very much back. At yeah. least a few people said he did. I mean, up two goals yeah. suggest he might be. Um, He's the stats so, yeah, well played on that one. Yeah, and I mean, that that one there. But, but I think that shows with this team that what you can do if you've got transfers left in spare when no one else has. Mm. Because what why this has advanced up the ranks is not necessarily... I mean, it's helped having like Kane as captain or Antonio as captain. But what's helped is that people like my other, my A team with no transfers left, they can't compete with it. (laughs) I can't compete with my rubbish team. So the rubbish team carries on and only I will care by the end. But nevertheless, I think other people will care about their their own B teams. And I think it's a nice... I I think if I was you, I would be tempted to... I mean, Aubameyang does does look good, but obviously we don't really know, considering he played the semi-final and he has been um, benched once. Potentially, Mm. he might... He might miss this one, but I guess we're not going to know that until we see. I think they're, are they the first game for the lineups. I can't remember. I think they might be, aren't yeah. they? On um, that day, for, yeah. Oh no, they're not. They're eight fifteen. Oh no, Tuesday. it's eight fifteen. Yes, yeah, sorry, yeah. Yeah, so we're not going to know, but no. hopefully we'll get um, a sort of you know a bit of information Steer, as to whether yeah. we play or not. But if not, I think the two subs, as we've said multiple times, on the final day for whoever's man, in Man City's team for that final game yeah. does just look great, just to get two Man City players in. Yeah, <laughs> whoever might be starting. Yeah, J- David um, Silver plus one probably. David Silver, Jesus, Sterling. I don't own any of them. I could do. I feel though I want to captain Kane that day, not a ah, City asset. Okay, okay. And one of the reasons is with City. Yes, they could completely hammer Norwich. They probably will. But I don't know who's going to get the mega haul. Will it be Sterling? Will it be De Bruyne? Will it be Will it be Foden? He can. It'll, as well. it'll be all of them, probably. <laughs> and it'll be all of them. They'll all tick along. Meanwhile, with Spurs, it'll probably be Kane. With Arsenal, it'll probably be a Bamiang. And then you're yeah, talking. I know what you mean. Yeah. And then you're talking man of the match, and it's the final. So I look at that, um, and and I suppose that comes on to captains for game week fifty one. So let's 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 have a look at uh, at fifty one and the, the matches taking place. So we're lucky in Sky. Because these matches take place at four o'clock on a Sunday. Team sheets come out at three o'clock. We can make transfers right up till four o'clock. This is lovely. So we're going to know who's playing. So as, yeah, so you look at that and then say for sake of argument, KDB is benched. Then this, if you've got one or two transfers left, wow, you can, you can, you can really take advantage of that because people like my A team can't, I can't do anything about that. I just probably won't captain him. <laughs> But I can't do anything else about it. So just going through the fixtures here. Arsenal against Watford. Aubameyang leaps out there. Burnley against Brighton. Uh, possibly not for the captaincy, but you know a good a good matchup for Pope. Chelsea against Wolves. Um, hard to judge. Uh, Palace against Spurs. Kane, a good option. Everton against Bournemouth. Leicester against Manchester United. Manchester United. Leicester's defence looking awful. So Martial, I think a good a good option there. Um, Man City against Norwich as we've discussed um, Newcastle against Liverpool those with Salah those with Mane this could be this could be a good one I'm thinking about captaincy really for these Southampton against Sheffield United and then West Ham against Villa captaincy wise none of those really appeal to me um, but yeah for you I mean who say say all those you, you want to play are playing and mm. you get those team sheets in who, who have you got your eye on and captaincy and does it depend on sort of where you are in the rankings, that type of thing? I mean, it certainly will on the final day. I think I still, I mean, if you see all the lineups and you see that Kevin De Bruyne is starting at home to Norwich, I still feel like he will be the most heavily captain yeah. player out of, out of anyone because his ownership is incredibly high. Nearly everyone should have had them in their team, you know, the whole season. Um, and I think therefore with the best game, I mean, it's a no brainer basically. Yeah. Um, the only reason to be to go any different is is to be different. Yeah. Um, I think so. When you're looking at your leagues, um, or if you're in the overall and you and you want to secure one of those top five places, which many of our viewers, mm. you know, there'll probably be a few out there that are in that sort of top ten overall. Um, yeah, you've got to you've got to consider that. I guess yeah. uh, how else are you going to make up twenty points on your opponents? Mm. I mean, some of the teams you can see they're open, some of them you can't. But a lot of people will have worked out who the others have got, depending on how many points they get on each individual days. You can very easily work mm. it out if you want to yeah. who they're most likely to have. 
Um, and the, the average amount of transfers uh, is incredibly low. I think it was below one or, yeah. or around that in the top 10. So, um, yeah, there's a, there's a good chance that they probably can't really do much to change their team. So, yeah, in those situations, I think, you know, what does it matter? Uh, and yeah. If you're still going to be winning your mini leagues and you're not going to drop, I mean, you're sort of 60 points ahead or something stupid, then by all means, you've got to be a different avenue. And Aubameyang obviously screams out there. Yeah. Watford have just lost their manager as well. There's no telling what that will do. I mean, you, you could say that maybe it will have the adverse, uh, the opposite op, uh, effect on them. But considering we get to see a little preview of that versus Man City first, um, then then that's quite good, I think. Because mm. if there are absolute shambles against Man City, um, you would expect Arsenal would punish them. So Aubameyang is probably the standout and sort of next differential for me after a Man mm. City player. And then I still really like the idea of Antonio just because yeah. he's a midfielder playing up front and mm -hmm. it's against Villa. Um, and, and the sort of the form he's in, if you're able to, if you've got him in your team, I mean, we've already seen you've got what 62 points or whatever it was, um, and that's you know in part because he's been midfielder, so yeah. he, he just gets those extra points. So I do really like that. The, the other ones, I mean, like the likes of Kane, there's loads. We've been, we know all the other players. Um, we'd have to kind of just gauge it on the lineups. I mean, we might come to the final day and Palace have put out their entire reserve side just mm -hmm. to see if the kids yeah. are doing good, and suddenly that might change things. We, mm -hmm. we just, we just don't know to be honest. But those are sort of my three: Man, uh, Kevin De Bruyne, Aubameyang, yeah. um, and then probably Antonio as like a, a third sort of backup option. That I, I kind of like. I still like David Silva. As a captain. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, um, Man's when I say KDB, yeah. I basically mean yeah. Man City. And if and if yeah. Sterling's starting, uh, and Sterling, if David Silva's playing, yeah. then he heavily stands out as well. Yeah. The thing with Man City, I think I'm right in saying that um, after that game against Norwich, the, mm. which is the 26th of July, their next game is the 7th of August. Is that right in the Champions League? It's the Champions League, yeah. Because yeah. in their heads, it would have been the FA Cup final, but it's right. not. So yeah. you, you would imagine the squad he's going to put out against Norwich and Watford is within with that Champions League in mind. That's what they're That's going for. That's my thinking. Oh yeah, I think this that gonna, on yeah. Exactly. It should. I mean, we've heard Pep talk about. It's impossible to predict Pep, mm. but we've heard him talk about rhythm so often. Mm. Um, and this is probably his only opportunity to get some sort of rhythm because that's quite a large gap now, 26th of July and, and, to the 7th of August. And the players know these next two matches, your man, your Phil Foden, your Man City player, another one, and you know you are playing for a place in that Real Madrid side, as in mm. the team to face Real Madrid. Mm. And um, so that's gonna that's motivation, because we're always looking for motivation at this time of the season. And that has to be, surely, so it's motivation. Um, yeah, yeah. So I would have thought he plays that he plays like their best team yeah. with maybe I mean I I'd include David Silver in their best team but yes. maybe Pep doesn't but um but yeah uh, plus him would would be my thought process mm -hmm. um at the end of the day because this isn't Man City's final game of the season perhaps David Silver plays another game that is his yeah. final game rather than this yes. but I I still think he plays this one to be honest yeah, with you I'm pretty sure he, he will I think he does um and yeah I suppose the alternative view of this just to throw it out there would be does he want to pick up an injury in a, in a next a meaningless game when he's mm, going then got Real Madrid as well yeah does he want to play De Bruyne he gets injured and then he doesn't <laughs> have him for Real Madrid I suppose you could look at it that way but I don't think Pep thinks like that I think yeah. everything he talks about is rhythm yeah. so and I, I would just be surprised and, and it's, I mean those playing FPL um, can't don't have the luxury that we have we know we know yes. what the side will be and we can make a decision and that's why I'm minded to leave my two transfers because of the flexibility um, and you know as, as you, you were saying there are other options there as well so if my Man City guys are playing then somehow I might look to get a Bamiya in as well I just wanted to mention we had a couple of questions actually about this so FPL uh, Wilson last transfer final day punt who to go for Kane against Palace a Bamiyang. Perhaps Benny Blanco, one transfer left initially planned on Kane to a uh, Kane to a City player, but is a good sneaky move to go to a Bamiyang. So he's actually thinking of getting rid of Kane. Um, two good fixtures are more likely to start two games. So he's you're thinking about a Bamiyang now. That that move I was considering there, um, get him in for Villa. Um, I think there's a slight risk there, and I think if you only got one or two transfers left, it would be really annoying <laughs> to see a Bamiyang benched against Villa, and you've just spent your precious transfer to get to get him um, back. Um, but I just wanted to say about captaincy here, and about depending on where you are chasing, consolidating. A Bamiyang currently is in ten percent of top one K teams. So if mm. you are 
going for a top 100 or trying to win it <laughs> or you know just trying to get as high as you can within the top 1k a Bamiyang captain final day would make sense um, because he's only in 10% of teams huge differential Kane is in 35% of top 1k teams a bit more but nevertheless there's two thirds of teams in the top 1k do not have him so if you can captain him get him in and captain him these are two great differentials Mane is in 13.9% of top 1k sides. Newcastle currently, as far as I can tell from the injury list, don't have a defence at the moment. I'm not sure who. Maybe maybe Bruce himself will get kitted up and be playing. But um, Mane at 13.9% is in, not in many sides still at the moment. Mm. And I think he could I be... I think that's a very, very good way to do it, Joe, yeah. actually. That's what you want to be doing is looking down those lists and see yeah. who are these explosive players yeah. with a good game that have got no nobody in their yeah. team. And even if you don't think they're going to score as much as the mm. likes of Kevin De Bruyne, um, which, you know, probably most won't, um, it's still worth just rolling the dice on the off chance that they do. Exactly. Because it can give you that big rise. If you've got Kevin De Bruyne, you're getting half his points. Okay, mm. you're not getting the full, the double one. But your other player might get more. And the chances are, no, your rivals do not own this other player. Do not own mm. a Bamiyang or Mane. Uh, Martial, uh, 21.5% of top 1K sides. So at the moment, three quarters of the top 1K do not own him. So yeah, whatever that's, very, that's, very, that's very much to do with the fact that Martial's a forward in Sky, isn't yeah. it? Not, not anyone's got any place for him. It's no. quite expensive. Wasn't looking like a particularly good no. option compared to the likes of Rashford and Fernandes until... Uh, is just ridiculous run of late. But, um, so that I think that's why his numbers are kept down. You know, if, if he's a midfielder, suddenly he's in 80% of teams, I think, yeah, straight away. Exactly. And, and uh, Leicester's defence, in well, let's be fair to them, it's in tatters. <laughs> Kane annihilated them, and Martial can do exactly the same. So another good option there, I think. Um, for the, so I hope that answers those, those questions there. Um, we had a couple more questions about what we've learned from the season. Uh, anything different we would do to approach the game so you've been playing this for a long time and mm. you've been was it fourth third which i mean you've yeah i don't been... I, I finished fourth overall before I've, I've i mean generally i finished in and around the top 100 nearly every season i've played there's been a few where i've sort of dropped out in fact last season i think i, I can't even remember last season i think in the end i just hit mm. around 100th place or something yeah. i can't remember if i finished there so it's difficult and, uh, to know what you've learned <laughs> from this season. Yeah. Because... Um, this season's been dreadful, though, so I suppose it does help you a little but, bit. But have there been... I mean, I know we've had the pandemic, the lockdown. We came back without an, an extra overhaul. Um, so uh, that depended on how many transfers... Obviously, if we knew what was going to happen, we wouldn't have wasted transfers <laughs> in um, January. Uh, we would have just, like, saved everything up. Um but, I mean, is there anything you've taken from this, this season that you might carry over to other seasons to, you know, perhaps go, perhaps go higher than fourth? <laughs> yeah. Um, I think there's a couple of things, yeah. I think, basically, these individual match days, I think I've spoke about this the other day, I think, I, I think you just have to do everything you can to cover them. I mean, there's going to be the odd one that you can avoid. Um, and, and obviously knowing which ones those are is very tricky. But generally, if, a, if it's a sort of a Burnley versus a Norwich, nobody's got any of these people. Um, you know, how much can they effectively hurt you? Yes, you could take a little punt and bring them in. Um, and, they, and they might get you sort of 20, 30 points. But then you probably have to use another swap to get the person out. Mm. Was that really worth it? Probably not. But having said that, the vast majority of these uh, this season have worked out. So yeah. I think from now on, I'm going to try as best as I can, unless it's that scenario I just discussed there, to cover. So I think I'm going to look to cover something around sort of 70 to 80 percent of them. Whereas this season, I probably went for more like sort of 40 percent of them yeah. and often tried to keep those swaps. But what I did with those swaps, I can't tell you. I feel like I've mm. used too many swaps on a lot of the time sort of pointless midfield swaps where... I'm still stuck in that mindset where midfield is the dominant position mm. in Sky and it had been for so many years. And I think over the last two years, we've been shown that uh, it's really not now. No. Um, defenders have become ridiculously good. Um, you know, you can almost look at them the same as strikers and say the, the points potential on some of these guys is massive. So using some swaps in defence mm. and, and attack is where you really want to yeah. spend your moves. I mean, if I'd have just left the likes of, uh, you know, Mason Mount and these people who are, uh, at periods were pretty good midfielders because they were so cheap and they did pretty well. And then they go for a poor period. And then you find them swapping for another midfielder and another one. Then you want to come back. It just mm. seems like a, a waste of moves because their yeah. ceiling's not particularly high. So I feel like saving transfers, especially for the forwards, for the, for the captain days, 
is a good move. Yeah. Um, and 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 you know, added to the fact that midfielders like Sterling and Mane were moved to the forward positions, just meant that midfield is just a dearth. So it's hard to judge now exactly what they'll do with that moving mm. forward, whether they'll move those guys back to midfield or et cetera, et cetera. But if it's much the same and the rules are much the same, then, um, you know, again, I went for Liverpool defence at the beginning of the season and Man City with Laporte and stuff. That, that was unfortunate with Laporte, obviously, he got mm. injured for most of the season. But we had sort of 15 games there at the start where Liverpool didn't keep a clean sheet. And I persisted by keeping them in my team for... You know the first half of the season you know yeah. hell bent on the fact that these guys are the best options now it turned out they did but i just reacted too slow to it i feel like i should have moved those defenders on earlier yeah. gained some points other places because like i said they're a, they're a prime position i'm basically wasting a prime position there for, yeah. for half of the season yeah. i should have moved away from them and then just come back to them later and that would have been a better use of my swaps than swapping all these midfielders yeah. around so yeah, I just reiterate it. Cover the captain days and spend my spend my swaps in the premium defence and the and the attackers. Um, and just one final note is, if there is a cheap striker out there that is doing well, don't be afraid yeah. to go to him. I think last season and and you could argue this season, Jimenez was incredibly cheap. And last season he was ridiculous. He he scored all the time but because he's that lower price bracket. You often wouldn't find yourself doing that because then you'd have a load of money in the bank and then you didn't want to invest it rest of your mm-hmm. teams and you couldn't get back to a premium. But that's the way I looked at it. So just get them in, trust them. You know, it's hard to yeah. know who it's going to be. This season, it was clearly Ings. Then it was the same thing. I didn't move to him for most of the season, mm. just not thinking that he could continue, thinking that I'd need all that money for the premium strikers, you know, putting in Sterling and stuff like that who, who weren't doing anything. So, yeah, if, if another cheaper striker starts performing, um, don't be afraid to get them in. Forget yeah. the price element. Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, I, I completely agree. And I think the difference between my A and B team in these final few weeks has shown me um, not just um, the benefits of keeping back those transfers for these final weeks because most people will have used them. Most people who are really, really high up, say February, March time, they, they're they high up partly because they possibly have used more transfers. So you can get an advantage on them by keeping them back for a surge at the end. But also, I think you're completely right about the, the single game days. So my A team, I, I can't do anything about I couldn't do anything about Antonio. I can't. But in my B team, I have been able to. Um, Nick Pope has been a good asset for me in my B team for exactly those single game week days. Burnley against whatever. Burnley clean sheet. Save points. Suddenly, you're looking at a 20, 20, 22 point haul from your captain. Mm. And he's just like a six point whatever keeper. So it's those kind of players. Henderson at Sheffield United, whoever's got him in, they've been doing really well. A Sheffield United defender. And it's as you were saying, it's about looking at those those premium uh, places. So, you know, the likes of Alexander-Arnold or Van Dijk. And then looking at that and thinking, well, hang on, if I get a Sheffield United defender in over this period of good matches that are coming up and they've got a couple of single game days or at least one, just put the captain on them. And who knows, you could end up with you know, those extra points. And there's those extra points are the difference between top 1,000 and winning it <laughs> and also, you know, not, not getting a very good rank at all and then getting somewhere near the top 5,000 or something. Um, and that's the difference. So, yeah, I completely agree. Um, I also think uh, as well, in terms of the different ways I'll play it, I think it's going to depend on the pricing. The other benefit of Sky is the pricing doesn't change. There's no price changes. So we'll know at the beginning of the season those types of strikers like Ings and who knows about uh, Leeds and whoever else is promoted, what assets they're going to have, strikers. We'll remember Burnley's Graham Alexander, uh, Graham Alexander Arnold, Graham, well, he might as well be, Graham Alexander <laughs> when he came up, he uh, was on penalties um, and he kept, um, uh, but it was, we didn't really know that, but when Burnley were there, Suddenly, it's like, oh, we've got a great asset there. Suddenly, you've got a goal-scoring defender, gold dust. And it's those types of players go for. Um, see, I, I ignored for a part of the season John Lundstrom because, you know, he wasn't listed as a defender. He was listed as what he should be in the Sky game, a cheap midfielder. But he kept scoring. And he would have he was a really good, for a period, a really good Sheffield United captaincy shout. Mm. But I, in my head, I kept ignoring him. Because I thought, oh, he's not a defender, so I'm not getting that benefit. But ignoring the fact that he was actually a scoring midfielder, he was cheap. Um, so it's those kinds of things. It's looking at that pricing early on. 
and, and seeing where you can avoid making transfers. So that, yeah, I like this final part of the season. Definitely enjoyed having more transfers, which, which sounds stupid, <laughs> but... <laughs> um, but it's, it's, it's that, it's, it's that effic- uh, the efficient use of transfers, yeah. which often is only you only know whether it was an efficient in hindsight, unfortunately. Yeah. But the efficient use of transfers is just, I mean, combined with obviously a little bit of luck, mm. is obviously incredibly key. Yeah. And um, spreading that over the course of a whole season, obviously you have a plan mm. uh, as to how many you want to use. And obviously we're a little bit more frivolous with them at the start, usually compared to mm. the end. Well, I am because I'm going left. Yeah. Um, and I do appreciate, you know, for me, the pandemic really affected my transfer plan. For many, it will have done that. But ultimately, if you've, if you've used them a little bit more efficiently than I had, um, then I could have could have really risen up even more so in these last few years. Because to be fair, be fair, a lot of my calls in terms of who I was going to capture on individual days have done very, very well. Mm. It's done good. And it's almost like this this game's coming up. I pretty much know or, or I'm confident that one of these guys, is gonna, this guy's going to do really mm. well in this match. However, I can't move to him. And then he goes on and does well. And it's mm. been really frustrating. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's like, I couldn't even do the move. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so as, as ever, efficient use of the transfers. And mm. I think you just have to bear that in mind, even right at the start, you know, pick the players, like you said about, we're going to know the prices, you know, the prices from the start, you don't mm. know who's going to be the best players for the season, but you can at least look and think, well, there's at least three or four players mm. around that price bracket there. that have got a very good chance of having a good season. So I need someone at that price bracket. I'm going yeah. to stick them in. Um, and then at least I've got those swaps to, to go between those two or three people. I think yeah. that. I mean, that's helpful in FPL in all fantasy, yeah. to be honest, isn't it? But Yeah, if you can make that swap in one rather than have to make another one to free up money, that's another mm. bonus there. So as you said, price points are good, obviously, in Sky. Um, just a final question, really. Lee Williams, um, who also asked us about you know what we've learned from the season, but he also asked what changes we'd make to the game. Um, I mean, I've got one particular one, and more pertinent to you, actually, having come fourth, is that I would like, in as in FPL, some kind of um, career history in this. That'd be great, yeah. I've gone. I've 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 been in the top one hundred once, but I can't even remember what year it was. <laughs> mm. And um, I I still say to people, oh, I got on top. Well, anyone who plays Sky would care, but um, top hundred once. <laughs> and um, but I'd like it to be in black and white there. Um, and just have a look at the career history. I just think that would be an important thing. And there's lots of people watching this who are playing it. People like you, been, you know. In Dan Cox's case, won it, but also other people who, mm. um, you know, in the top in the top five, top ten, and it would be good to have that. But um, but I don't 100%, know. If the, I agree. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's a, there's a name. I mean, every season you look at the top one hundred, and it's the same sort of fifty names with yeah. fifty new people every season. So there's there are at least fifty people out there who mm. have finished in the top hundred every season virtually um and, and yeah to have those career histories yeah. there'd be some there'd be some incredible people i mean i think of nate like you said he said dan cox straight away there's loads of other people out there that i know are in certain groups and um yeah their history would just be crazy to look at it, mm. it would be mental um so yeah very much agree with that um mm. for me i think i think there's a couple of things to be honest i feel like man of the match should go I feel mm. like I don't think it will go because obviously it's the the thing of the excitement who got the points. Mm-hmm. There's more points to be had, but I just feel at this stage it's it's too subjective. You know, one week it looks like it's been heavily a, an ownership pick. Whoever's the most owned, the person's just thrown it in there. One minute it looks like it's a stats pick. Suddenly it's a player you never expected would get man of the match. But then you look at the stats and you got like 36 interceptions or something, and you're like, mm, okay, mm. was that an opt to pick or something? Yeah. Um, and yeah, sometimes it's just widely off the mark. Um, yeah. So I, I don't really like it because that just adds that element of luck. Now I know they, I think the way they they sort of acknowledged that last season because they dropped it from five points to three points mm. to almost say, yeah, we agree, it's a bit ropey, but it won't hurt you as much now. It's mm. just three points. Um, I think that's not really a proper fix. I think just get rid of it entirely, yeah. um, or make it so it's some sort of. Uh, system like like FPL have got, you know, where it's clear to everyone. Well, FPL's not quite clear, but you know what I mean. They might lay it out right at the yeah. beginning. If your player gets the most points in this in this game, then he is the man of the match, for yeah. example, something like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that that would be a change. Uh, and also, just another one is I think the the balance still now has kind of moved away from midfield and has gone to forwards and defenders. So I'd like something to kind of readdress that. Yeah. I think Sky got a little bit lucky because the season before this, the defenders, uh, you know, the Van Dykes of this world, the Laportes of this world, who just churn out 10 points every game they play virtually. And if they do concede, probably five points. Um, I don't think that's that's right. I think yeah. that they need to do something about these passing centre-backs that mm. just end up being ridiculous. Yeah. Um, 
so I think they should they should do something maybe raise the bar a little bit but then that obviously affects everyone else who's never going to get anywhere near that mm. so I'm not really quite sure what the answer is there but then I think there needs to be something either their prices need to be hiked mm. or they need to uh, lift the tiers up a little bit and then you, you're paying that premium basically to get the passing bonus which to be fair you don't get off many defenders at all no. do you it's pretty much Man United Man City mm. You know, there's a few select few. Occasionally, Soyuncu was getting them before. The top team centre backs, basically. Um, and I think it's just too powerful. I mean, Van Dyke's probably going to end up being the, the best player again for the second season in a row. Um, Always feels like cheating, doesn't it? It's like you're, yeah, you're just I mean, picking yeah, 10 players and Van Dyke. Yeah, is, is that fantasy football? That's mm. my question to you. I mean, when you think of fantasy football and you ask the person on the street, fantasy football, they're going to think of your Ronaldo's, your Messi's, your people yeah. up front, you know, your, your star players. And yeah, Van Dyke is a star player, but you don't think of a centre back and think you put your captain armband on him and you leave him for the whole season mm. and he ends up being probably the best pick over the course of the season. Yeah. not a big fan of that. I feel like something has to be done there. Yeah, it's almost like he's broken the game, broken the scoring mechanism. Sometimes you get that, you know, a player comes along and they're just like, well, actually, he's hitting all of those thresholds every game. And mm. yet he's priced like this. So you want to make it more of a game, more interesting. Van Dijk at 15 million go... would make it interesting. Yeah, way. exactly. There's be something I don't want to go into a Liverpool game at home to I don't know Wolves and think should I captain Salah here or should I captain Van Dijk? <laughs> I don't think that's the decision I should be making. I think it should just be on Salah. Yeah. So the fact that the game's rules have, have set up in that way, where probably Van Dijk will end up being the better pick if you made mm. that choice 15 times out of 15, yeah. you'd probably be up on it rather than going Salah. Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. That might be a personal thing. No, no, I I agree. I think I think I think in, it's it's more about Van Dijk than any other defender there because as you said he just it, you need to make it more of a game it's a game and you need to mm. make it a game and you need to create decisions and that decision about Van Dijk is 15 million do I want to pay 15 million for 10 points guaranteed every week well then that's a decision to make but do I want to pay 10 million or 11 million for yeah it's no decision then, is it? then it's no decision you just get him in and then you yeah. just pick 10 other blokes <laughs> In fact, it then it then probably if we were playing sensibly and not with our hearts, we then don't have Salah like we've said, and just yeah. and then suddenly you've taken that asset out and you, you do it, and that's probably I've, the way I've, to have I've done it. I've had Salah or Mane for I don't know when, I don't know, yeah. way way before lockdown, and I haven't missed them at all. Mm. Um, but I should miss them. Um, but yeah, that's in the it. mean in the meantime, um, being great great hearing your thoughts, Luke, for the final game week of the season. Um, good luck to you and good luck to all those listening and have been watching us uh, for this season so far um, you know I really hope that your final game day goes as well as you hoped uh, but for now Luke um, goodbye yeah goodbye for me and good luck everyone I think there's going to be a lot of money as usual on the lines for mini leagues for the overall for everything on the final day there's going to be a lot of people behind sofas sweating but ultimately there's going to be it's going to be so much fun because you can end up with a I mean, life-changing amount of money and that's yes. why this game's really, really fun. So good luck out there to yeah. whoever gets it. And feel free to donate. You know, we are here. We've, you know, if we've helped you, by all means, send 5K <laughs> our way. Yeah. Uh, well, good luck uh, sending us 5K, please. And, <laughs> um, and goodbye.